I ran into town this morning, got the stuff to change the oil in my pickup, got an oil filter and oil and everything. And uh, I'm gonna go up to the shop and get that changed. A little over 8,000 miles since the last oil change. So we're gonna get that done and y'all get to watch me hopefully not get very dirty and get oil all over me but let's get it i got my bucket under here got the valve off and i'm gonna let that drain out wash my hands and wait for it to drain a little bit before i take that filter off Got that new filter on. Right there. Made a little bit of mess. Never fails though. I'm going to be putting in some synthetic 5W40. Uh, this is the first pickup that I've ever used that synthetic on. I usually use 15W40. Uh, <clears throat> but so far I really like how it runs on the synthetic. And I've been using it, you know, since the first oil change. I'm a big, big advocate for making sure on the vehicles that everything's changed pretty close to what they recommend. Air filter, uh, cabin air filter, fuel filters your transmission oils, everything like that. I think over time it extends the life of your vehicle for sure. When you take care of it, it'll take care of you. Something I do a little bit different than uh, what most people do. This pickup calls for uh, 13 quarts of oil and my philosophy and I could be wrong because I'm no diesel mechanic um, so don't follow what I do but uh, instead of putting 13 quarts of oil in it uh, I will put about 12 and a half uh, quarts in because my theory is you're never going to get all the oil that's already in there out. And over time, if you just keep adding 13 quarts, 13 quarts, 13 quarts, um, that's going to build up. And you're going to have more than, than what the vehicle calls for in there, which I'd rather run a little bit less oil than a little bit more oil. So... That's just my theory on it. Like I said, I've been known to be wrong and I'm no diesel mechanic, uh, but I try to do a lot of the work and the maintenance uh, by myself on the, the vehicles just to save a buck here and there. Get her started. Backed out that way I can get some sand or something. Get that oil I spilt cleaned up. Check for leaks real quick. Hey, so I think we're golden. 
we got them fooled another time. So I'm gonna try to get some sand on this little spot and uh, get it cleaned up. And then I got something I'm very excited about to show you. And uh, we'll take you over there and show her to you. Fire up the dinner bell, get them headed this way. And and there she is in the back. This is the heifer that me and Tracy went to North Dakota to that sale. And she's the one we got. She uh she got here this week and uh it's probably right around a 30 hour drive uh on a semi for her so she is drawn and i'm sure sore and tired and everything else but that is her madame pride 1593 I am so excited that she is finally here, made it to Texas. Um, another thing is it was about 15 degrees when they loaded her on the truck. And right now it is 65. So she's probably going to start, start shedding, getting a lot of that winter coat off here pretty soon. But I am, I am stoked. I'm so excited that she's finally here and made it. This bigger girl right here should be Kevin sometime in the next three weeks. Uh, She's getting closer. Yeah, see if I can show you. Her bag's starting to fill up a little bit. Uh, if she'll let me get behind her. Her lady parts, the reproductive end, uh, are starting to loosen up and uh what they do is they'll when they get you know as they get closer uh that'll start to kind of swell and um get real loose and what it is it's just the body uh getting ready for that calf uh loosening everything up and uh as they get closer you can really just tell <clears throat> remember her and then look at this girl she's about a month or so behind or a month until she calves uh, you can see her udder 
Um, she's got a little bag, but not much of one. And then, uh, back here, there's, there's no swelling, anything else. Uh, so this girl will definitely be first. I'm going to throw out a little bit of alfalfa, uh, just a small square bell for them. Alfalfa is way higher in uh, TDN, total, total digestible nutrients. <laughs> That's a tongue twister. Uh, so it's got a higher protein and better for them than uh, the coastal and we've been feeding so i like to every time i come up here bring a, a small bell and get it out to them while the girls are busy eating in the pens i'm gonna hop on a tractor and uh, put out a couple of round bells for them I'm in a little bit of a hurry. I've got a uh, birthday party to go to tonight. So we're gonna hop in and try to get this done. That no way I can take a shower. And uh, everybody at the birthday party doesn't kick me out. be ready for springtime when the grass starts growing we start getting a little bit of rain uh, not only is putting out bells of hay just a it's not hard it's just kind of an inconvenience uh, but it's expensive and I can't imagine the people you know, right now, up in the northern states that are having record droughts uh, that are just trying to get by. We grow the hay here on the place, and uh, even doing that, you know, cutting out the expense of buying it, uh, by the time you figure in the expense of running the tractor, uh, equipment, you know, uh, fuel, time, all that good stuff. It it's expensive, so uh, really blessed that that it's grown right here, and we don't have to buy it and truck it in. I can't can't imagine, you know, going through all that that extra expense and everything else. leave y'all with something before I go get cleaned up and all pretty uh sometimes in life it's the littlest things that mean the most so as you go throughout your day try to kind of keep that in mind y'all have a good day thanks <laughs>